Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord's Weekend Guide Live. Okay, so last time we talked about baptism as foundational to the Christian faith. Luther, in the large catechism, wrote, without baptism there can be no Christian. And we take that seriously. Uh, not that we're trying to, to push other people out, but that we're trying to actually be certain that we're in. So our congregations, uh, we have it as a qualification for membership. Baptism. You want to be a member of a church in the LCMS? You get baptized. And that's a really good place to put it. You could put it on a lot of other things. Other church bodies have tried. You can become a member of a, of a religious organization by promising to give a lot of money to it, to, to uphold its teachings, to be a part of its, its services, to, to learn, to, to recruit, to, to do whatever, to speak in tongues. Um, some of those are, are godly and some of them are not. But the one thing that all of them have in common is that it's on you. And well... If it's on you, what happens when what happens when you don't do it well enough? Are you out? Do you have to re-pledge yourself, rededicate yourself, um, rejoin? It's tricky because it's the law. And if you want to be honest about the law, it makes sinners of us all. So foundational to the membership in a Christian church is gospel, baptism. And so in the large catechism, Luther writes, uh, but in this first place, we take up baptism by which we are first received into the Christian church. However, in order that it may be readily understood, we will treat of it in an orderly manner and keep only to that which is necessary for us to know for how it is to be maintained and defended against heretics and sects, we will commend to the learned. See, baptism is required to join the church. And that's not so that we can have a fight with other denominations. That's not so that we can have a fight with other religious sects. That, that's not supposed to be a weapon, but a shield. Because, well, whether or not we like to actually talk about it, a lot of folks have trouble walking into church on Sunday morning. A lot of folks have a congregation that they belong to on paper, but don't particularly feel all that welcome in. Don't feel like they belong. And you can try and fix that by homogenizing everything, by saying, you know, we're going to have only the, the youth worship service now so that unless you're young, you can't be a part of this, or, or, or only the German one so that unless you actually like um, sauerkraut, which is cabbage that has been left out in the sun to rot, you can't be a part of this. You can make jokes about casseroles and potlucks, but the thing is, underneath all of it, is this desperation to actually feel like we belong to a congregation and sin gets in the way of that. The law, which, which shows us our sin, points it out to us. And if our church is based on the law, if entrance into our congregations is based on the law, then no, we won't particularly feel all that welcome here. And it's not that I want to fight with anybody about baptism, but I do want to know that of all of the reasons that I have to get utterly washed away, from my congregation, of all of the reasons that I have not to fit in for hating sauerkraut, for being a giant sinner, for committing sin after sin, and walking into church where I know God sits, and I don't feel all that welcome because of that baggage. Baptism gives me an answer. Baptism names me God's child. It says that when everything else falls apart, I can still call this place not just his home, but my home too, because I am his child, and so I belong where he is. The joy about baptism is that it actually means you belong in that church, whatever you have ever done and whatever has been done to you, whatever would make you feel unwelcome or unwanted or worthless, baptism sings against those lies. You belong here because God has named you as child in those waters. You belong here because God has named you Christian. You belong here because God has named you holy and worthy of love through these waters. So listen to why. When we pick apart baptism, what we're not trying to do is start fights with anybody. But we really, really want to give answer to everybody who's ever felt uncomfortable in a Christian congregation because they happen to be a sinner and they happen to not fit. Because baptism joins us together, not just with other sinners, but chiefly with Christ who forgives us our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. <laughs>